So first of all, you guys have been here for a really, really long time. You guys saw some pretty amazing stuff. You guys got to see my best friend, April. That was amazing. You guys got to see Nicole. Like, I was blown away by that. You guys saw these two amazing speeches, and I'm just like, um, I'm here to teach you guys how to achieve happiness. Like, Nicole taught you guys how to become like the next president of the United States. I'll tell you guys how to do this. So, well, I got to do with that what I have, right? So, this is maximum happiness, and it's how to achieve the maximum happiness in your life. You, right there, you're the sleeping person right there. Maximum happiness in your life, right there. All right. So, can I ask if this is? Oh, yes, okay. So it's actually a science. It's known as positive psychology. And this science has simply grown recently and it's completely exploded. You see, there's a whole bunch of books on it now. A lot of books on it now. But the thing is, if I came up here and just said, hey guys, if you want to be happy, just read these like 15 books, none of you guys are going to do it, right? Exactly. So that's what my job is for you guys here today. It's how to achieve maximum happiness without these books. Now, for me, and probably for you guys, as a student, achieving maximum happiness means getting some good grades, right? Good grades leads to, you know, a good university. All right, guys, I'm gonna wait till you guys settle down real quick. And a good university is gonna lead to me being the most powerful person in the world. I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna be wealthy, I'm gonna own six islands. This is exactly how I wanna live my life. But the question is, is this actually going to make me happy? Yes, it is, it's gonna make me happy. I wanna own six islands. It's a, it, but actually, I took a class by um, a teacher named Mr. Poctagon in my sophomore year. If you guys have him next year, it's really easy to remember his name, P. Octagon, Poctagon, the best teacher you'll ever have. But he kind of made me question whether or not this is actually worth anything. So I decided to kind of go on a quest a little bit to find out what real happiness is. Because owning six islands is awesome and all, but I want to see just how far six islands will take me. So this is me right there, that's me. This is me in China, and then I decided to move to America. Now for me, it was a really, really easy move, but for my mom, it actually wasn't. For my mom, that meant that she had to um, leave all of her security, she left her friends, she left any sort of just like belonging back in China. And it was because of this that my mom actually fell into almost 12 years now of extreme depression. This is to the point where she had incredible medical illnesses that just came out of nowhere, that we were just so bewildered by. And so when I was young, I really wanted to treat my mom, but I was not a doctor by any means. And so I decided to ask my best friend, like the one closest to my heart, I asked Google. <laughs> <laughs> you become happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right, all right. So I asked Google, how do you be happy? And Google responded to me. He said, this is how to be happy always. With pictures. <laughs> all right. So it first says, happiness doesn't depend on who you are or what you have. It depends on what you think. Reduce complications, life is simple. And lastly, understand balance. Okay, that did not make me happy at all. So I really wanted to find out what scientifically makes us happy. Because simply Googling this kind of question doesn't really bring us an accurate answer. And it just certainly doesn't make me feel happy. I would rather own six islands. So I decided to go on a quest for happiness. In my sophomore and junior year, I just went on a year of research, and I discovered two categories of happiness. Now, the first category is elation. Elation comes as short term, and it's very sudden, such as winning a jackpot or doing drugs. Now, the second is fulfillment, and this is where true and this is where true happiness is supposed to come from. These are the people that you truly consider to be happy, who can somehow get through the most toughest of things. Now, of course, the school tells me that I'm not allowed to tell you to do drugs, so I'm gonna tell you exactly why doing drugs and elation is bad. Because it's something that's very, very short term. It doesn't fill the hole within you. Doing drugs and just becoming happy for that short term period is not going to lead you to true happiness. 
But fulfillment and Bob Ross, my friend right here, this is what real happiness really means. So to get here, there are three main ways. The first is gonna be a healthy body. The second is gonna be a healthy status. And lastly, it's going to be a healthy mind. So let's start with a healthy body. Now, a healthy body means that you take care of your own body and preserve your own temple that you made for yourself. Because you are not going to be happy if you're dying of some kind of chronic pain illness. I promise you about that. So to take, uh, to take research from this, I use the blue zone. Now, the blue zone is a uh, term coined by Dan Buettner in partnership with National Geographic, and it was kind of groundbreaking research at the time of 2007. And basically, there are geographic locations in the world where people grow to be extremely, extremely healthy. Now, just how healthy, let me show you. The average lifespan for a US citizen, for all of you guys, is pretty much 78.4 years. After that, you guys go into the grave, you know, cemetery, uh, something like that. <laughs> but people in the blue zone live up to over 100 years. You are adding 20 years to your lifespan. And none of you guys are even 20 yet. Think about that. What? I know, right? It's crazy. So, how do you achieve 100 plus years of beautiful age? The question, or well, the answer, is whole grains, more vegetables than meat in the diet, and a lot of olive oil, apparently, instead of using vegetable oil or saturated fats. And now, for Italians and Italians only, a glass of wine every single day. But wait! Before you do that, science is still trying to prove it. Don't try it at home yet. I wasn't paid by the edition to tell you guys to go drinking. That's not my job. And in addition to that, is a little bit of light exercise. Now, the people who are living in the blue zone, they live in places where grocery stores and uh, the place they need to go is within walking distance. So they get their exercise by doing their daily tasks. But for us, it's different because we have to drive, we drive to go to school, and we rarely bike like other countries. And that's part of the reason why America is kind of known for being obese, you know? We're not looking for a flat stomach, but we are looking for a little bit of light exercise in our daily lives. And now to go on is a healthy status. Now, as for me, as an Asian child, this is probably the horror of every parent, but I wanted to be an artist. And my parents, my parents, like, no! No, you can't be an artist! No! You want to be an artist? No, 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 no! You mean dentist! No, no, I hear you run, I hear you run, no, 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 no. So this brings up a question, this brings up a question. My parents are right, if I become an artist, there's a probably 99% chance I will become a hobo and homeless. But at the same time, if I become an artist, I'm really trying to travel to where I want to be, to who I want to be. So the question is, how much does money matter? And it turns out that researchers have an answer. The magic number is $75,000 as stated by Harvard in 2010. Sorry, Princeton. I apologize. Princeton. In 2010, $75,000. This means that if your annual income exceeds $75,000, you should be at your maximum happiness threshold. However, this number changes a little bit with the Council for Community and Economic Research 2016 for California. The number for California is $90,000. This means that if your household annual income exceeds $90,000, you should be at that maximum happiness threshold. This means that if you earn over this amount, Bill Gates should not be any happier than you. And you should not be any happier than Bill Gates. And any accumulation of money beyond this point really doesn't bring you extra happiness. So the answer is yes, money matters but only to a degree and a certain point. You don't want to be a hobo. Being a hobo isn't going to bring you happiness, unfortunately. I know some of you guys want to be like that, but... But money really does matter. So it's important to find a type of path that will be able to bring you the balance of both sides. Now, lastly, it's going to be a healthy mind. In the Maslow's hierarchy, we have physiological needs at the very bottom. But as we go back to the blue zone, it turns out that at the bottom, belonging with family comes first as what they consider to be the most important. 
And Harvard actually did the longest ever human study spanning over 75 years with over four directors, 724 people, with now only 60 people left, and now researchers with 2,000 children. And what did this research actually discover? They were trying to measure just like the patterns in a human life. But what they actually discovered that people who had the maximum amount, or not maximum, high, highest amount of happiness, they were the happiest in a relationship. They were happiest among their friends, peers, and family. So it turns out that a good relationship actually protects you both mentally and physically. And it doesn't have to be a marital relationship either. It can be with someone with a best friend, with your parents, or with a really, really beloved teacher, or some kind of mentor. But the thing is, is that you have to have someone that's there for you and cares for you, that gives you the amount of, I know it's gonna sound cheesy, but it has to be love. It seems that love really is the true answer to happiness, and Disney was right all along. <laughs> it turns out that people who are 80 years old, those who say they have a very, very high satisfaction in their relationship, their mental ability doesn't decrease since from the time that they are almost 40, which is absolutely amazing. They have decreased risk of Alzheimer's, mental retardation, and all kinds of things. It turns out to really protect you mentally and physically. However, this isn't the, uh, the fact for all of America. The Harris Poll and Time Magazine collaborated to make a happiness census every year for America. And in 2016, the number was 31 out of 100, which is incredibly low. And the University of Chicago in 2008 also says that one in five Americans feel that they are extremely lonely. And the Brigham Young University in 2015 decided this is actually something that's really, really harmful to our health. You have higher risk of diabetes, heart problems, all kinds of things. And I know that we're young right now, and these things don't seem like a problem to us. But that doesn't mean they're not going to become a problem in the future. However, there is a bright side. It turns out that the human body is incredible, and it's very, very resilient. It takes only three months for the average human, after a major tragedy, to get back to their baseline happiness. Which, if you think about it, that's truly incredible. Humans are really hardwired to find a balance in life. And we're truly hardwired to find our own place of happiness. So, in terms of how to achieve happiness, we need one, a healthy body. Two, we need a healthy status. And lastly, we need a healthy mind. As for me to apply this to my own life, a healthy body means exercising every single day no matter what. I decided that in my senior year, I was going to take something very, very challenging to me that I thought I could never conquer in my life. It's, it's weight training. I, I, I can barely bench 35 pounds. But I'm working on it, which is why it matters. Now next is going, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll let you guys know. Now, The second will be a healthy status. So that means that I have to work hard no matter what, even if I really perhaps don't really want to be in school. I still have to work hard, try to get a good education, make it to, let's say, a sustainable college, and try and find a good life for myself, and try not to think about really becoming a hobo, you know? But lastly is a healthy mind, which is a relationship. That means me building my relationship with my mom. And I saw incredible results. Every single night, before I would go to bed, to, right now I make this a huge habit of mine, but just say something very simple to my mom, I love you. Mom, you did a really good job today. Mom, you worked really hard. Mom, just know that you're the best mom in the world. And I saw huge improvements. Over the past year, my mom just told me just almost a few days ago, I didn't even practice this for the speech, but she told me a few days ago that she's never been happier in her entire life. And that meant absolutely the world to me. And just around a month ago, she actually said to me that, Irie, I know I said I want you to be a dentist or a lawyer, but there was a finally time that if you really want to become an artist, I think you should go for it. And for me, this was absolutely groundbreaking to hear my most Asian tiger mom say that to me. <laughs> but I know that it couldn't have happened if I didn't try to reach for true happiness and to try to reach for equality in our relationships. So please, I want you to take this message from me 
and try to find in yourselves maximum happiness. Thank you, guys.